Hello and welcome to uh, Let's Try. We're trying Scald against the, the Black Priory. I've been looking forward to this. I've been uh, kind of watching its development over time um, on, uh, you know, that, that bird site that's dying? Yeah, that that's the one. Um, I'm actually considering this game for a full playthrough because it looks like exactly my jam and it looks like your jam as well. Um, but this is actually going to be a first impressions video because I've, I haven't played any of it. And so we're going to be going through some of the tutorial. Um, I'll be cutting here and there so that you don't have to see me hum and ha over uh, some of the mechanics. But uh, I figured uh, let's let's see if it's something suitable for the channel and see if it's something that you'd like to watch and I'd like to play. So um, I've gone ahead and set this to I think would be the most accessible way. I appreciate that there are accessibility options here in terms of uh, making the game more readable. Uh, readable. Uh, and uh, so let's carry on welcome to the character creation start by picking a difficulty for your playthrough difficulty can be changed during play so i guess i haven't said what this game is uh it's not a roguelike uh it's not a traditional anything <clears throat> it's more of a i feel like it's closer to moon ring than it is to uh, a traditional roguelike uh in that it's it's uh, inspired by classic kind of rpgs harder but it's a bit more looting and gathering rather than uh you know fending for your life but we'll see uh, I'm going to set it to normal. Intended difficulty setting. There is no artificial smoothing of any dice rolls. Okay, that's good. Um, and it's very transparent about how the dice rolls work. Player rerolls one. Player damage rerolls zero. Player en enemy ro rerolls one. Miss smoothing three. Okay, so that's, it's in that's interesting. Combat heal false. No encumbrance false. This is uh, This is pretty cool. Let's select this. Next, select the class for your character. Classes define a character's role in the party by adding certain exclusive abilities. So we got some interesting stuff here. A warrior is a frontline fighter that can take and deal large amounts of damage. I, I'm usually, I, I, it's a little bit boring, I know, for, for people probably, but I'm usually uh, inclined to, when I'm playing a game for the first time, try a sword and board character because they tend to be uh, a bit more genteel than some of the more complex uh, battle mages. Clerics offer close range support to their party through area-based uh, buffs and healing. Champion is a cleric that excels in the use of blades and armor whilst still having limited divine spellcasting abilities. I have I have suffered this curse, but we're gonna do this. I'm gonna try the cleric. I, I, I have, have in the past really enjoyed playing cleric. And uh, I feel like games as of late, including Baldur's Gate, have kind of beaten that out of me. Like, I really want to be a support class, but also have some combat prowess. And I often find that it's kind of all or nothing with clerics. They're either just a buff or they're just combat, but there's like limited spell casting. But I don't know. I, I guess I could try something like a, a ranger or like, honestly, I've, I've kind of switched from being a cleric over time to a thief combines important non-combat skills with a large damage output against single targets rogue who combines stealth with the ability let's try a, let's try a thief maybe maybe my my cleric days are behind me and i've developed more of a roguish personal personality you know select the background for your character backgrounds add points and skills influence starting conditions and narrative content oh well uh we're a rogue why don't we go for uh thief rat or street street rat i like that Distribute points to your primary attributes and skills. Uh, they've gone ahead and highlighted the one that matters to me, so we'll go ahead and throw that, buff that up a bit. Oh, we're probably going to want some fortitude. I'm assuming that's going to be, uh, yeah, that's our health. Strength is definitely going to be important because uh, that's going to be melee damage, and we will definitely be doing some melee damage. And then presence is probably going to be uh, important because this is going to be uh, influence on awareness. So we got a little bit of D&Disms. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and just kind of add one to some of our biggest uh, uh, bonuses, and then we'll throw one more on survival. I'm being very lackadaisical about this. These are feats derived from your class. Distribu distribute your development points in them to gain benefits and new abilities. Uh, ooh, I get seven points. Okay, tradecraft. Three ranks and backstabber. Increased backstab damage. Sure. We can put a few ranks in that. Lightweight, uh, light weapon finesse. Three ranks, light weapon accuracy. Six ranks, precise strike. Okay, I see. So you uh, unlock new perks based on 
how many ranks you have so if i put like three ranks oh okay we get we get some bonuses right away uh if i put one point in that so let's put one point in that let's put three ranks in this so we have an extra point to hit and then we'll put uh, the rest of our points in stealth so that we have plus one to stealth finalize your character by editing their appearance i appreciate when there's a randomize button sure that guy that look that looks like me i i definitely look like markiplier i promise you uh type a name and press continue bingle on the wine dark raging seas of the outer isles a lone caravel struggles against the winds and waves towards the accursed lands of idra uh, uh oh <sighs> Um, okay, the moan of creaking timbers, the tang of preserved fish. Your eyes slowly adjust to the darkness of the ship's dimly lit hollow, or hold, sorry. Uh, suddenly, something strikes the hull and the ship rocks violently. Your heart begins to pound and a feeling of unease grows in your stomach. Rise, well rested and ready to go. Get up, mouth dry and head pounding. Okay, yeah, sure, let's, uh, no, no one should be that ready to go, you know? get to your feet and become aware of agitated voices shouting up on the deck something is not right you should make your way up top and get a bearing on the situation be on your way okay so uh we move Ooh. we move to your surprise you realize that this door has been locked from the outside it doesn't budge perhaps you could slip the lock with a thin blade or something or use something to smash it if you have not already done so, you can must equip a weapon. Press E to manage your equipment. Okay. Uh, I gotta say, I'm really, really down for this like wave of games we're seeing that are like very much influenced, inspired by uh, you know games of yore, old, old-fashioned games, but with a bit of modernization. I think that the biggest reason um, that you know those old games maybe don't hold up i know they do listen i know they do i know they're great i know uh, like a uh, uh our old rpg favorites are are still amazing however they are so inaccessible they 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 really do um suffer from their you know their era because of uh you know interface problems and it, it makes it really difficult to to get back into them and and even as someone who's like played like recently some of the older games i'm like uh, you know i, I kind of miss some of the quality of life features that you know, modern gaming has really uh brought to the table so so we've uh, i really appreciate these games that are like let's let's uh do it again do those old games uh with a new coat of paint i really love the way the dynamic light kind of melts in this game that's really cool okay we got a table can't be far now desk with a maritime maritime navigation map the map is labeled the outer isles and a course is drawn towards an island and named idra idris elba that's that's why i was laughing i can't okay so we can move with wasd i don't know if we can move with the oh we can we can oh uh, we can't move diagonally but we can move with the numpad I always love when the game has uh uh numpad support all right, use our dagger. We've unlocked the door. You slip the dagger through a gap in the door and lift the bar that was locking you in. The door begins to creak open. We gained some experience. As the door swings open, you can now clearly make out cries from the deck above. You should make haste. I feel like there, uh, there's probably many studies, but there needs to be more studies on the like intense dopamine effect uh, that maybe maybe just I get whenever I see plus 100 XP, it's it's honestly astonishing. Like I, I immediately, like my day is better and uh, I, I feel I feel just, you know, much better about things. So let's, uh, let's take all of that, picked up some items. We've got some armor. I wonder how armor affects our stealth. It looks like we soak some damage now. Um, we put on some, a small, wait, being light armor okay so that's light armor this is headwear so it still counts as light armor i think we've got a ranged bow with five arrows we've got some cure severe disease thank god moderate attunement tonic i don't know what that is but it's worth some money 
All right, um, you stop dead as you narrowly avoid stepping in a rust red puddle. The stench of blood fills your nostrils as you look around in the dim light of the hold. You realize so someone or something fought for their life here. The same moments the the same moment the thought hits you, a hiss sounds from the shadows. You squint towards the shadows as a hunched feral looking form slowly slinks forward, tiny, disgustingly human like hands. Yellow fangs and a grotesquely dexterous pink tail leaves no doubt of the creature's rodent to nature. I love how it's like slowly coming into view. Like this is our first creature that we're probably about to fight, but the game does not hold back on this. Like, hey, this is still like a horrifying creature, um, you know, and it's like just kind of slowly creeping towards you. Though as it emerges from the shadows, it becomes abundantly clear that what may have started life as a common ship rat has now grown into something that has no right to exist. A second hiss sounds behind you and the abominations lunge at you. All right, let's see what combat looks like. Blood, what did that say? Blood will pay? Begin combat. Um, okay, so we can move a little bit. Let's move back. Oh, I see, no, that we are placing our character for, uh, for combat. Okay, so let's move close to this rat. On the right side so hopefully we can only we, we can try and fight one at a time they get to move first it looks like they missed um okay so we have perform attack consumables pass turn and defend hold action until end of turn um not much for a tutorial here but honestly i don't think it needs one um how come i can't move there is there like a box there disengages Okay, so we've taken some damage. So we've got what might appear to be uh, some D&D &D rulings. How come I can't move to the right? Seems to me I should just be attacking. Cannot fire in melee. Okay, we... I guess I had my uh, ranged in, in uh, equipped. So let's... So yeah, they seem to be getting attacks of opportunity, and so I'm paying um, in blood. So let's just try and attack this guy. We did some damage. Ooh. We did some nice damage. I was going to try and do a backstab, but it looks like I did not um, set things up very well. All right, this, this was our first combat. It's a good combat to try and... Uh, experiment I think because I, I think that uh, usually the first combat is skewed in your favor you're you're very it's very unlikely you're gonna die on your first combat but I, I've been known I have been known to die in my first combat it's you know I have an un uncanny ability to do really stupid things but you know it's all in the in the in the uh, process and the uh, you know the all, all for the greater good. You know, it's, it's for the for the sense of experimentation and, and learning. You feel weakened and realize you've been infected by the foul rodents. Perhaps you have a potion you could use. If not, you would do well to search for one before proceeding. You may see what conditions are affecting you by opening the character sheet. Weakly diseased. Okay. We have 812 XP to go before we level up. So let's use one of those uh, cure severe disease. Consume. All right. And uh, let's check. Are we still? No, we are. We no longer have any active uh, conditions. This is good. And picked up a lantern. Can we equip that lantern? Yes, we can. And now we have light and we've got like almost not quite dynamic light. I wouldn't say it's dynamic light uh, because, I mean, I, you know, I, let's be honest. I don't know what these terms mean. Maybe maybe it is dynamic and I don't know. But generally, when I think of dynamic light, I think of like more like uh, shadows that uh, are cast based on your like POV. Um, we found something. I don't know what I found. What did I find? I found some salt an empire runs on salt as the Gal galleon empire's preservative and seasoning of choice it is no wonder that the salt merchants guild is both rich and powerful okay let's go up the ladder you emerge onto the ship's lower deck as your eyes adjust to the darkness you become aware of a hulking figure standing in the shadows 
Bingle, here at last, growls a rough voice. Who's there? Show yourself. Freeze and listen carefully. Feeling jumpy? The brute growls with a smile. Roland, why are you skulking in the shadows? The brute chuckles. Shadows suit a face like this just fine. No matter, there is no there is trouble and you you're needed on deck now. Have we arrived? Let's get this over with. The island is in sight, but the damn guilders refuse to land. They want to turn back. Did they say that? Only superstitious bilge. They claim they saw something in the water. Either way, our boys are about to show them some very real steel. If we can't land, we lose our shot at the girl. What? And no one gets paid. Listen here. I know our, I know our boys better than most. We've hired them to go to Idra and kill. If we don't pay, things will go bad quickly. But the sailors are bloody terrified. They claim something is hunting us. Let's go for all the good it will do. Wait, there are a few sailors up ahead. Rattle is a pair of rabbits. We're not here to make friends if that's what you're suggesting. Spill sailor blood and the guild will want to make you pay. Take the left door ahead and spare us some trouble. And a pay cut. Perhaps. Anything else you feel compelled to tell me? Let's just get off this bloody boat. You and Roland begin making your way towards the com uh, commotion on deck. Press Q or press the character portrait portraits to swap the party leader. I see. Okay, well, let's grab some stuff before we go. What is that? A perkin. A fish. We got some thieves tools. Always good to have. So, um, he was saying which door I should go through to avoid combat. I guess it was the, the right one. Press control to enter stealth mode. Stick to the shadows and be sure to reach cover before your stealth reaches zero. If the stealth indicator is green, you're in cover. Oh no. Dead emperors, it's coming for us, it whispers to me. It whispers to me. One of them draws a weapon with shaking hands. Get away from me. Diplomacy versus 10. Calm yourself. You're guild sailors. Um, diplomacy 3 plus 2d6, difficulty 10. Um, I don't hate those odds. Mingle must roll 8 or above on 2d6 to succeed on this diplomacy skill check. Oh wow, double six. Resulting of six, uh, 15 beats 10 by 5. The men stopped dead in their tracks, seemingly shocked, back from their momentary lapse of sanity by your words. The pair blinks towards you in a moment of indecision and stumbles up to the main deck in the tumult that seems to be taking place up there. At 100 XP. I've spotted something. More salt. Um, a wooden chest. Thievery 6 versus difficulty 10. Okay, let's pick it. We are a thief. Unlocked. We get ourselves a buckler and a cutlass. Keep pressing the wrong button. Where's that buckler? Let's throw that buckler on. Um, I could use the cutlass. I wonder if, um... Yeah, okay, so we have different equipment for different characters. This one seems like they're already kitted. They have a two-hander. So we don't necessarily want to mess with that. I suppose I could compare 1 to 10 damage slashing versus, oh, 3 to 5. Yeah, I mean, what they were using is, like, totally fine. Fun that uh, you cannot rest here. When you, when you sw click on the portrait, you switch... The character out. I also appreciate I've always mentioned this, but I really appreciate when um, the characters the characters like uh, Avatar is represents what kind of uh, equipment they're wearing like the equipment actually changes them visually You recognize the corpse of one of the crewmates a young man of barely 16 years called Sullum The youth has been mauled to death by what you assume are the grotesquely altered rats you encountered just minutes ago The corpse is still warm Ghastly. We've got. Um, oh, well, I wanted a oh, surgeon's journal. We've got some stuff. I keep pressing the wrong button. A journal that was kept by the ship surgeon of uh, Zephyr. Written on the day of departure from the mainland, left Adler's helm to today with a full complement of passengers, mercenaries by the look of it. 
paid well. Ship was dispatched by guild before we could fully restock medical supplies. Hopefully we won't need them. Then again, our passengers make me uneasy. Written five days ago. Brawl in mess. Had to get a set nose. Men seem on edge. Can't say I blame them. Have been sleeping poorly and dreams are unsound. Um, Egan came to me today with a bite wound that he sustained whilst working in the hole. Didn't see creature and I would say it was a rat's bite if it weren't for the size and some aspect of the dentation, dentition that I find hard to d explain properly. Was visited today by Navigator Aslam. He asked for white fern, a sedative. Claimed he had trouble sleeping. Suspected he was not fully forthcoming and when pushed, he mumbled something about the stars being odd. Not sure what he meant and he left before I could push him further. Men are about to break. We cannot maintain our course for Idra. Captain advised me today to make ready for the surgery and to expect casualties. I suspect he intends to inform our passengers that he refuses to land on the island. If this is my last, the entry trails off. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, that guy. Oh, I loved that guy. Oh, we got an extra dagger for our trouble. Wow, some kind of weapon. Maybe not a dagger. Oh, there's the ladder. Oh, you emerge onto the deck and see two groups of men facing each other with weapons drawn. The ship shakes violently in the grip of a storm as lightning tears across the sky. Amidst the din of the storm and their frantic arguments, you bellow for the attention of the assembled crewmen and mercenaries. Both your ship, the ship's captain and the leader of the mercenaries you hired, a coarse thug of a man named Estavo, turn their attention towards you. They look ready to use the unsheathed weapons in their hands at the slightest provocation. Um, address the mercenary leader. The mercenary leader, Estavo, flicks his dark eyes to you, but keeps his blade fixed on the desperate captain. Uh, there's a reason he's known as Fireblood to his men. Um... Estavo, you'll get your money, but let me handle this. A cruel smile twitches into life on Estavo's wind-weathered face. There's only one rich, noble girl, but we can always find more sailors. The ship's captain bristles at these words. Captain, why have we not dropped anchor? Something dire stalks these shores. We cannot approach without risking the ire of that horror. A jittery mutter of agreement rises from the sailors, causing Estavo's eyes to darken even further. What horror? What have you seen? Um, not but glimpses. My men have seen the shadow of something deep in water, stalking us. Nothing natural moves like that. Estavo glares murderously at the captain. You renege on our deal based on a glimpse? Foolish superstition, take us in now. Yeah, you renege on our deal based on a glimpse? There is desperation in the captain's voice. If we are seasoned sailors, we do not balk at shadows. You need to be alive to rescue this girl you speak of. Um, we're out of time. Sail us in or argue the point with Estavo. Estavo turns his steely gaze from you to captain. Let me spell this out for you, sea dog. We contracted to rescue the girl, but if you don't get us to the shore, we'll get you for free. We'll gut you for free. The mercenaries you hired all shift their weight in anticipation of making good on that promise. Captain, he's right. Do what you were hired to, hired to do. Something changes in the captain's expression. He stands tall. I will not order my ship and my men to certain doom. We shall not get any closer to the coast while I have command. Uh, diplomacy versus 10, I believe you, but my contract with these men does not mention your survival. I have to roll an eight again. I'm, I'm apparently trying to do things. Uh, no, I failed. Diplom diplomatically, Estavo's grin begins to show teeth as he hears your words. The color drains from the captain's face. There is a moment of silence, then a crash and a shudder as something strikes the ship's hull. In the confusion, a mercenary's throwing dagger flies, lodging in a sailor's throat. Fight the crew. Death or glory. I appreciate these like outlines making things like really easy to tell who's like my, who's a, who's a good guy who's a bad guy um this time i'm not gonna tr place my guys so forward I'll, I'll i'll go back a bit i suppose we have two guys now this time so if i was to go here i wonder if i would get a backstab on this lad what 
Yo, what, 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 what just happened there? He didn't at all go where I wanted him to go. What do you mean lightning attacks? I might uh, stop trying to do backstabs because I clearly do not understand how all of this works. I got a charge attack. So if you move uh, in the same direction a couple of times, then um, then you get a charge attack. What is going on? My character seems to just kind of do whatever they want. Like, I clearly clicked on that enemy and they're just like wandering away. Um, why don't we switch to the bow? Since I'm having a, a hard time. And we'll do perform attack. What do you mean? What? Out of ammo? That cannot be true. Oh, I, I guess I have to equip the ammo. Okay, I've equipped the ammo. Uh, was that a bad guy? Did I just attack one of our friendlies? All right, that, uh, at least uh, at least Roland is like, you know, actually doing work here. My dude is like about to die. I feel like I should. Um, it's Roland's turn. I, I, I should take a turn and, and take a heal potion. I guess there's some dice rolls going on that I don't fully understand. Our, our main character, Bingle, almost died. Let's just take everything. Nice that I don't have to go rooting through all the corpses. You rest your sword arm and survey the carnage. Then suddenly a loud crash as something collides violently with the hull. Uh, surviving mercenaries and crewmen alike fight to keep their footing as the ship lurches. Suddenly huge monstrous tentacles, classic tentacles on a ship, burst from the water around the ship. For a split second before the terror sets in, you wonder what Estavo must be thinking as the monstrosities loom over him. After reaching their full height, the tentacles curve inwards and smash into the ship. Some pierce straight through the deck, others snap the mass like they were matchsticks. Your stand, a, your stand frozen in place. Through a haze of splintered wood and panic screams, you notice Roland. He throws himself out of the way of a tentacle, but begins to fall overboard as the ship lurches once more. Go to Roland's aid. You dash towards the ship's fractured uh, rail, dodging holes in the deck and wounded men, beseeching you for help. Roland uh, hangs by one arm from the side of the ship. Try to grab him. You lunge for Roland's arm, but he loses his grip and your fingers close only around thin air. You missed him by an inch. He falls wordlessly down, uh, downwards. You watch as he is swallowed by the raging sea. The ship is listing fatally, and you see the great tentacles high above you, poised for the coup de grace. Um, abandoned ship. As you jump, you hear the terrible rending of wood giving into flesh. The impact of the water wins you. The waves pummel you down. The currents beseech you to go deeper, ever deeper. Peaceful blackness. No, I don't want to wake up. You are going to wake up, Sink. Okay. Ooh. Really appreciate these, uh, you know. I, I love the commitment to this, like, really old, uh, kind of, like, limited color palette style. It's not any less work than doing things with, like, a full gamut of color. But, like, it's, it's just, I, I, I really appreciate that commitment. It's so, it looks so good, and it looks so, um what's the what's the term like faithful to to the the kind of the style and the mood that this game is trying to set so um what do we got going on here guardsman dressed in the li uh, livery i've ever, never known of his livery or livery of the noble house baron the guard scales somewhat at you arms master lara awaits you at the main entrance you best talk to her if you've not already done so also, something I do appreciate um, that this game is doing, and I have appreciated uh, this as well in other games like Moonring, is um, when you start the game, you are not hammered over the face with like lore, world building, uh, you know, backdrop, origins, 
like there's a little bit here enough to kind of get you seated you know seated into the, the, the world um you've got a little bit like all we really know is that we're at Elbr uh edra right um we were headed to to edra and we were gonna we were looking for a girl i mean that's really all we need right um we've got a journal if we want to read it but like we're we're only taking in as much as we want for now i i feel like too many rpgs uh commit too much energy to like you know shoving the whole burrito dexter's lab style in your into your mouth of like world building before you've even figured out how to move and it can just be a bit much so i do appreciate uh, the restraint here um an aging armored man in the livery of house baron stands okay return whoa wait a minute. uh you eyes like coal peer out from a craggy face fringed top and bottom with wild white hair return his challenging stare the older man crosses his massive arms steps towards and leans uh steps forward and leans towards you so young cell sword come looking for a scrap have you Though his voice is full of gravel, there is now a glint in his eyes, as though the old coals have begun to warm up. Kadian, you old fool. Single bark of laughter emanates from the dense beard as he embraces you in a crushing bear hug. Kadian uh, may be older and grayer, but from the force of his hug, you don't reckon you'd have any more chance of beating him now than you did as a twelve-year-old. It's good to see some things haven't changed. Kidian uh, steps back and allows you to breathe again before grabbing you by the shoulders. He heard your of your uh, we heard of your father's passing. Truly, he sits with the golden dead now. Tell me, how did he die? Um. Eh. Inglorious battle at my side. Kidian's eyes narrow. Then the old warrior died a fitting death. Kidian is quiet for a moment, then breaks into a grin. We'll raise a cup to his name together, you and I, soon as you're done with Keto, and I can rustle up some ale fit for a guest. Gideon, why am I here? Master Kato will chew your ear plenty when you see him. Bingle. <laughs> I regret this name. Lyra, the new master at arms, awaits you by the main entrance. She'll escort you, and don't ask her not to, if you think I had a temper. The joke fails to hide the note of anxiety in the grizzled house guard's voice. Diplomacy versus 15. What are you hiding from me, old bear? Nope. I won't betray my master's confidence by saying more. Best you see him yourself. The man offers a smile, but it fails to iron out the concerned creases around his eyes. Very well, I'll go look for the master at arms. If you want to explore, for old time's sake, take this lantern. Lord Baron will wait, and we don't want you getting lost in the hedge maze again. The man laughs heartily and hands you a small brass lantern. Activate or deactivate lanterns by pressing T. Whatever may come to pass, it did this old warrior a barrel of good to see you again, boy. The old man slaps you on the shoulder in parting, almost knocking you off balance. He then seems to remember something as he leans in conspiratorially? Conspiratorially. Yeah, M, damn knees are aching up again. You can't hardly sleep on account of the aches, let me tell you. I'd take an arrow in the leg any day. If you're going over to the kitchen later for a bit of grub, a bottle of brandy from the wine cellar would make me a happy man. Kideon shifts as, he, as if to emphasize his stiff knees. But first, don't keep Lyra waiting any longer. Talk to her first, and I'll be here for later. All right, so, oh, we're in stealth mode. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, can we pet the dog? Is this very important question? Can we pet the dog? You pet the dog. All right. All right. Everyone can go home now. We pet the dog. All right. Good. Guardsman dressed in the livery of... Uh, I, 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 I haven't decided how to say this word. Uh, Baron. The guard scowls somewhat at you. Arm Master Lero awaits you at the main entrance. You best talk to her if you've not already done so. Okay. I really do love the way that the kind of uh, fog of war melts away. Is that Lyra? A woman stands before the main entrance of the villa. Uh, her posture speaks of a graceful, coiled power, that of a dueling ace. No doubt she is the new master at arms for Mo uh, House Baron. As you approach, she offers a quick, neat bow, just low enough to be respectful. 
Greetings, Bingle. Master Kato uh, welcomes you back to the house of Baron. The master is eager to meet with you and is ready at your leisure. However, if you wish to refresh yourself first, he suggests that you visit the kitchen for some food and then perhaps walk the grounds and gardens. Um, very well, I shall explore a bit. Excellent. Though I'm sure you still know your way around the grounds, the kitchen is in the building to the east and the garden and hedge maze is to the west. Come back and check in with me uh, and once you're stretched, once you've stretched your legs. Okay. I'm going to go pet the dog about 50 more times. Uh, make sure we can exhaust that mechanic to the best, to the fullest extent that it can provide. Can't go those ways. Let me go to this building. You enter the kitchen and a pair of scullions offer a scowl, a hurried bow, bow. Sorry, apparently I can't speak. It's all so much quieter, emptier, and gloomier than you remember. Of course, old Magda is no longer where she used to be, sitting by the oven, kind, red-faced, and tending a shank of lamb. Reminisce. You remember the matr uh, matronly woman as she sat, humming to herself, pouring fat over the roasting meat. Child, come here, will you? Magda was always a beacon of kindness in a childhood where such qualities were few and far between. Go to Magda. Magda clasps you gently with her tubby hand. Have you eaten yet? Before you can answer, she produces a small bottle of treats from her apron and hands it to you. As a son to the master of at arms for the great house baron, you did not go wanting. Materially, at least. Thank you. Magda looks at you with, a, with kind eyes as you pick at the bundle. He's here again, down in the cellar. He's not so good, my child. Sleeping now, but it would be best if you got him to bed afore his men see him like this again. The knot in your stomach is as real now as it was when you were twelve. I'll go get him. Don't worry, he won't make a fuss. He just needs time. You know, Bengal, deep wounds take a long time to heal. The old woman turns back to her meat and resumed her meandering humming. I thought we were reminiscing, but I guess this... Uh, I was a little confused by that. I think there's a couple typos here and there that, that uh, are tripping me up. The sound of a man clearing his throat snaps you back out of your reminiscing. May I help you, my lords? The man in a chef's outfit offers in a hoarse voice. Um, all right. Chef offers a short, short bow and a tired but sincere smile. I am Chef Armand, and my humble kitchen is at your disposal, my lord. Uh, sadly, I was told of your arrival only minutes ago, and my oven must be fired up again. You must be famished. Indeed, I am. My suggestion is lustily. Whilst I stoke the fire, you run down in the pantry and fetch some cured ham and cheddar cheese. I will then teach you how to cook my renowned melted cheese sandwich, and you shall never want for an evening meal for as long as you live. Very well. Splendid. The pantry is west of the wine cellar, and the cheese is kept in the northernmost room. Return when you have cur uh, cured ham and cheddar, and I shall provide bread and instructions. Now, venture forth into the underworld. Where is the cellar? Use the hatch in the floor over there. Armand points towards a wooden hatch by the wall. It's quite dark down there, but there should be a lantern and a chest near the stairs. Good luck. Chef Armand wanders back and forth, tending the fire and keeping his kitchen tidy. He has the gait of a man who has been on his feet for far too many hours. Uh, Kideon asked me to fetch him a bottle of brandy. Ha! The old wretch is too cowardly to come himself, so he sends you instead. The brandy will be the end of him, I say. Then again, who am I to deny the old fool his few pleasures? You'll find a crate of fine Goramain, Goramain brandy in the northeast corner of the vine, the vine cellar. Vine cellar. All right. Well, let's uh, go check it out. Empty bottles litter the floor of this room. You chuckle to yourself as you imagine the kitchen staff and their wine tasting sessions. No doubt much revelry has taken place here. Then a cool gust of air from the passage to the north. The wine cellar lies that way and you can almost hear faint sobbing. Ghouls. Ghosts, no doubt. Um, alright. Well, we got a chest with a lantern. We must have like three lanterns by now. Oh, we, I guess all of our stuff is gone? Did we lose everything? Dang. Okay. Oh, I didn't mean to go upstairs. Look at all of this wine. 
You're gripped by a long hidden memory upon entering this part of the cellar. You sealed it away, but in so doing, preserved its strength, and now it demands freedom. You can still recall smelling him before you could make out his writhing shape in the dim light of the cellar. Mistress Valeria, open the door. You, your father doesn't even notice you in the throes of his intoxicated ramblings. Uh, how could they take her? Her chambers were locked from inside. Where, where is she? Try to sh say, uh, shake some sense into him. Your father jolts upright, the bloodshot whites of his eyes glaring out of the darkness. We found her wandering the forests outside the estate. Mistress Valeria, help him stand. Haltingly and leaning heavily on you, your father manages to stand. She was never the same. Whatever happened broke her. It was the girl, you know. The seed was planted in Valeria that night. But how could you know you were but a babe yourself? You help lead the now sobbing man out of the cellar. Stop it, father. Lord Kato trusted me, and I failed him. But Valeria was the one to pay the price. Mind broken, and that spawn of a child. Your father's voice seethes with fury. Enough. Don't talk back to me, you bastard. What do you know about honor? As much as your harlot mother. Your father steps away from you unsteadily, tears streaming down his contorted face. Strike the man! You draw a ragged breath and snap out of the memory. Your knuckles white. You're alone in the damp cellar and don't particularly feel like dwelling there. So okay, we were we were remembering the uh, the old chef, who's now just a memory. So is this the brandy? That's the brandy. We'll grab it for our friend. This cellar is quite extensive. Look at this cheese. I'm picking up all the cheese. So much cheese. We only need one, but I have fifteen. Truly, our. Our stocks are heavy with cheese. Where is the cured ham though? We need cured ham. Where is it? I think it'd be like, oh, there, there's some ham. We need a six cured ham. Can we pick up this fish as well? No. All right. I like how brisk, briskly paced the uh, the movement is in this game. Kitty and uh, uh, I have the ham and cheese. Perfect. First of all, here's some bread. Now the cauldron is quite empty and just warm enough for you to use. Remember, you need both the bread, ham, and cheese to make the perfect sandwich. Now go give it a try and give me the results. I shall see if you have it in you. Okay. Uh, cr cheese sandwich craft. Apparently you need a lot of cheese. Oh no, one cured ham craft a, craft a sandwich. Okay. We've, we've done it. We have succeeded where our father failed. Chef Armin wanders back and forth. Uh, I have the ham and cheese. Present the sandwich for inspection. Armin wafts the scent of the grilled sandwich towards his nose. Ah, the crust of the bread, the softness of the cheese, the savoriness of the ham, perfection. You shall indeed never again go hungry in the night. Party gained 50 experience points. I shall make another ham and cheese. Or my arrogance knows no bounds. I, I'm missing components. Oh, gosh. Damn. Oh, wait, can I, can I steal this bread? Oh, damn it. I guess I shall only have one ham and cheese. Zounds. Uh, wait, where's my friend? I'll give him the brandy. I have your medicine. Ah, that's some fine foraging, young whelp. Before you can get a word in, Kitty and snatches the bottle, uncorks it, and drinks deeply. The old man, eyes closed in relief, lets out a deep sigh. May your sleep be dreamless, he speaks as if to himself. May your sleep be dreamless? Party gain, 100 XP. Gideon smiles sadly. An old soldier's greeting, something one mercenary would say to another as a prayer, to not dwell painful memories, the kind that comes with the work. Your father and I... Gideon halts momentarily and looks at you. Your father and I would always part with those words. Now, I've held you long enough. Be on your way. Are you ready for Master Kato, or do you wish to wander around a bit more? Would you have uh, 
have you eaten or perhaps see the hedge maze if the darkness does not scare you? It would scare me less if you joined me. Under no circumstances now, if you will excuse me. Wow. All right, well, let's have a look at the hedge maze. Is this it over here? No, this is where uh, this is where I went to the kitchen. Um, this is, I think, where I came from. So it must be on the uh, at the west end. Yeah, this is looking hedge mazy. What do we got here? Should you be here? Should you be here? I don't, I don't know. Should you be here? Should anyone be anywhere? Should I be here? You stand before the gate to the hedge maze. It stirs old feelings of both dread and elation. The sounds and smells of the estate grounds as they were long ago call to you from distant memory. You feel you could easily plunge into their depths. Let yourself go and remember. Which daydream is it this time? Are you valiantly defending me from rebels again? Embla throws a pine cone at you, snapping you from your reverie. She's 10 years old and you're a year her senior. Let's play hide and go seek in the maze. I'll hide. You faintly hear someone yell her name from the distance. You better run, star child. Only my mother ever calls me that, Embla says, frowning. Where did you hear it from? Before you can reply, she flings another pine cone at you and before, uh, before darts off into the maze. Uh, I think there's a big chunk of text missing there. I feel like it's before you can do anything about it or like before you can respond. Give chase. You hear a man's voice yell, a yell Embla's name again. Much closer now. Either way, she's lost to you in the winding passages of the hedge maze. Your memory tugs at you, urging you on to the center of the maze. I appreciate these little uh, interludes. They give us a little bit of a character backstory without doing like the cutscene thing. I suppose uh, some people would prefer cutscenes, but I don't know. I, I, I get this kind of like queasy feeling when a game puts a cutscene cut in front of me. Um, I'd almost rather just kind of read it, to be honest. There's a few reasons for that. I don't know if there's anything inherently wrong with cutscenes. I guess it's for me, I don't like having my agency kind of yanked away from me. When I'm reading the text, it still kind of feels like I'm in control of like, you know, how much I'm consuming of a thing. Uh, sorry to use the word consume as if it is a beverage, but you know, anyway. You stand at the center of the maze. It feels much less impressive than you remember. The ornamental pond was an, uh, uh, once an ocean, the rock at its heart, a windswept island. You found me, daydreamer. You remember the tone of her voice and can almost see the impish ten-year-old girl wading through the pond. Why do you always come here? I like the water. It's so calm. Embla shoots you a mischievous look. You notice the faintest tang of ozone. She makes a slow motion hop through the water, her fingers trailing the pond's surface, where water and skin meet surface. Uh, uh, sorry, strange colors bleed and spread across the surface. Embla, you'll get in trouble. Stop it. Embla moves her fingers across the water's surface like a painter's brush. Colors spill across the pond. And for a sleeping moment, you fancy that you can see cloud-topped mountains. Or was it the ramparts of an impossibly large city reaching towards the heavens? The silence is shattered by a shout along the beguiling images. Mistress Embla, the master requests you in the house immediately. That's my father. Something's wrong. It's mother. She's ill again. I think I cause it with what I can do. It poisons her mind. How long until mother isn't mother, or until father isn't lord, or your father isn't master at arms? How long will any of it last? Why are you talking like this? Do you ever feel like everything is a lie? Like there's a veil that covers everything, but in some parts it's thin enough to see through? Embla starts as your father steps breath uh, breathily into the enclosed garden. He's red-faced from exertion and anger. Young lady, you can run off like this. You can't run off like this. The whole estate is looking for you. Your mother is ill and needs you now. Say nothing. Your father shoots you a stern glance. I'll deal with you later. Embla says nothing as your father grabs her by the arm and hauls her past you. Back to the house. She doesn't meet your eyes as you pass. Finding yourself back in the present, a chill has crept into your bones. You best move on. Oh, I can roam around in the bushes. That's kind of neat. I wonder if that makes stealthing, like, 
easier. It says 100% stealth. I'm not sure what that means. I'll say I'm quite lost. I'm quite lost. I'm quite, quite lost. Quite, quite lost. Quite lost. I could go back. Um, I kind of want to just like check out. I, I kind of, I, I just, I don't know. I find revealing the map to be very uh, compelling. But I guess I did find uh, what I was looking for in the hedge maze, which was introspection. I really just like the way the fog of war bleeds away. Or melts away, I, should, I suppose, is a, a better way of describing that. All right, let's 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 go back now. Yes, let's go see Kato. Very well, if it pleases you, the master is in his office just ahead. And note, once you meet with the master, things may move quickly, and you may not have another chance to walk the grounds. I remember the way. I suppose you do, but I'll escort you nonetheless. A flicker of a smile plays across her face, and she beckons you to lead the way. Quest completed. Exploring the grounds. Okay. I love the tile set in this game. It's It really evokes like this kind of nostalgic feel, but it still, I don't know, feels a bit more modern. The opulence has faded. The shadows longer. I guess intentional is what I mean, other than like modern. Clearly much has changed since the last time you were here. Try to remember how long it's been. It's been years, perhaps decades since you were here. Not since your father was the house arms, uh, house arms master. Not since. You must have your wits about you, and perhaps now is not the time to dwell on painful memories? No, not since. Not since your father's exile. You were more than twelve when you were driven from the household. Hard were the years that followed. <clears throat> the mercenary life is a bloody and unforgiving. Is bloody and unforgiving. It would be good if I like read the text properly before talking about typos and stuff. Those years stole your childhood and eventually they took your father too. But your father had always insisted to his dying breath that his failure had been his own, that he had gotten the fate he deserved. The memories are painful nonetheless. I'm reading all the text. Is If I'm going to be doing multiple parts on this demo, I may as well, uh, you know, explore it to its fullest. Flanking the doorway are two marble statues. The craftsmanship is stunning, but the sight of the two women depicted fills you with sadness. Examine them. One you recognize immediately, Valeria Baron, the mistress of the house. You remember her as a gray ghost, absent and unwell. The other statue depicts the girl you once knew so well. Embra, uh, Embla Baron, daughter of the house, and now a woman grown strong and clear-eyed. Her like a likeness has none of her mother's cowed timidness. How is Mr. Valeria these days? The mistress is vacationing in the countryside, Alira answers curtly. And what of Embla? Lyra's eyes flicker ever so slightly. We should hasten to Master Baron. He's been along and uh, been impatient to see you. Be on your way. All right. We have two. Uh, well, we have two members now. Kato Baron sits tall in a... Oh, no, she's gone. In a tasteful but modest reception room, he looks less imposing than you remember and with a few more crow's feet. Nonetheless, he's lost none of his composure or air of casual authority. You take a seat across a formidable uh, desk from him. The study, like the rest of the villa, uh, is half-lit, giving a morose cast to its opulence. The older man's face creases into a tired but genuine smile, which momentarily lifts some of the room's oppressive mood. It's a mercy to see you again, your own man and in your prime, Kato says before a frown consumes his smile. It's just a shame our re reunion is overshadowed by the fates of those we love, but perhaps together we can yet improve our collective circumstances. Why have you summoned me? Embla is missing. Kato's voice quivers momentarily, betraying his stoic features. Now I beg of you, Bingle. <laughs> I forgot I knew. Help me find my daughter. Help her return home, where she belongs. Why me? Is it not obvious? You're, you've clearly grown to inherit your father's resourcefulness. And besides, Embla has trusted you since before either of you could speak. What's happened to her? She left without notice a week ago. From the scant clues we had, we believe she boarded a ship bound for one of the Outer Isles, Idra. She went of her own free will. At the time, I thought little of it. 
Kata begins to glower. Since then, however, there have been reports, grave ones. Reports? No one and no one and no word has left Idra in days. Rumor has it even the Imperial augurs are in the dark. I know now that uh, I know I know not how his uh, this touches the fate of my daughter, but she must be returned to me one way or another. Any idea why she left? Something has been building in her for years, an aptitude of sorts, but I suspect you already knew. In any case, it's grown much stronger lately and drives her in ways I cannot understand. I suspect she is looking for answers. But why Idra? Why indeed? There is little on the island save the port of Horan. If Idra was her destination, she must have landed there. Um, Horan? Yes, an old imperial port and home to a few hundred whalers, traders, and the occasional smuggler. We can only speculate as to what drew her there, but it's her own, our, our only lead. How can I help her? Hire mercenaries, travel to Idra, and begin your search in the port of Her uh, Horan. From there, I trust you to do what needs to be done. Spare no cost. Just bring back my daughter. Mercenaries? Yes. If nothing else, the port will be dangerous enough. That is why I have summoned a Roland Grey Eye to me, a crude but effective sellsword that I've made good use of before. He shall accompany you on this task. Roland Grey Eye? The man is a grizzled veteran. He may have slowed with age, but his experience and reliability more than make up for it. He's also much respected by similar men, and so will be instrumental in hiring a reliable crew. I'll take it into consideration. Kato shows you his upturned palms, beseeching. I know this thing I ask of you is fraught with danger, but this is your chance at improving your fortune, materially and in honor. What say you? Um, very well, for my family's name. Kato smiles softly, visibly relieved, and for a moment he looks like the man you remember. Have you any final questions of matters to discuss? Time is, as I'm sure you appreciate, of the essence. Let's just get on with it. Kato stands with poorly concealed efforts, and bingle! You stand and meet his gaze. Return her to me. There is no other outcome of this affair. Shake his hand and leave. So we have context uh, for why we are on this quest mission. You're awoken by the cacophonous cries of gulls circling you. Your body is a mass of pain and exhaustion. Covered in a thousand cuts and scrapes, the large white birds gather around you in eager anticipation. What a magnificent feast your bloated corpse would make. Not today. Minutes of, or perhaps hours pass as you may lay unmoving, trying desperately to will some warmth back into your body. Finally, you manage to force your eyes open. By some miracle, you are not only alive, but you find yourself on the shores of the cursed island of Idra. Strewn around you is the wreckage of the Zephyr. You see no other survivors. Though great hardship and terrible danger no doubt lies ahead, you must nonetheless venture forth. You set your jaw, and, and on aching legs you take your first steps. Where the path will take you, only time can tell. Oh, come on! <laughs> no, dude. No, for real though, that's a bad place to leave it. We only had one combat. Two combats? I, and we don't even get to see the kind of open world nature of the game. Ah, oh, gee whiz. What was that? 15 minutes? I might... <laughs> well, if you're seeing this, uh, I've undoubtedly had to take down the video I uploaded and now do some editing. Um, I am looking forward to this game. I think that demo lets it down somewhat. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be real. Uh, I, I really think that we could see a little bit more of the gameplay. If if I understand correctly, this is gonna be a, a pretty long game in terms of like how much you can expect from it con content wise. Again, I don't want to describe it like a beverage, but you know what I mean. Um, it's it, I think it'll have quite a few hours, so I think the demo could spare a little bit more. Um, but that being said, I am, I really like what I'm seeing. I'd like to see more combat to know and understand better if it's something I want to do a series on. Uh, but I have a funny feeling it will do quite well on my channel and I'd like to uh, see more of it. So, uh, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more of it. 
uh, and let me know if you've played it and what you think of it. If you ha did enjoy this, definitely hit the like button and consider subscribing for more content like this, and I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.